I see Africa as a young continent, as it is now, but also so dominated and relying on technology. Okay. But if parameters A and B are not fixed, uh, it, may, it may look in a different way. Let's say uh, young people, we are driven by technology. We, are, we dream about technology. We know how to use it to how we are testing of using it. We are already using it and we are major players of the technology. But if we did not take care, like let's say, like where we will be like the source of energy to power the, the technology, mm-hmm. we will be in a total mess. Agreed. Like the way the communication we rely on on, on Western satellites to to feed signals to our homes. So anytime they say we are cutting, we are switching off. Okay. So we may return back to the stone age. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. See, this is it. This is why I say knowledge is the most important thing, right? And we yes. need you and your mates have the power, right? Is you have the power to go out, seek the knowledge, to become experts, so that in the future, you guys decide this is what we want to do and go and do it yes. without have, having to rely on some, someone else to help you do something. Yes. Hi, Jonathan. How are you? I'm fine. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. All right, thanks. Wow. So, how is uh, Washington? Oh, Washington is great. The weather is cooperating. So, I I have less to complain. <laughs> yeah, you're lucky you came. It's a uh, spring, so yeah. So, yeah. yeah. It's a uh, it's a uh, mild now. It's mild yeah, now. Yeah. 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 Uh, and New York will be all, will also be mild by, by, by the time you get there. Yeah. Okay. I think so. <laughs> yeah. So how, how was your, how's your flight from Rwanda? Ah, uh, my flight uh, was, was was safe and uh, and fine. Okay. So and, tell uh, tell me, you you went from Rwanda to where? I went from Rwanda to mm. uh, here. To to here to Washington. Oh, that di- direct flight to Washington. No, not direct, not direct. I had some transit. I, I okay. need to pass. I need to pass uh, by Nairobi, mm. and the transit from there to Amsterdam, and then from Amsterdam to uh, to Washington. Wow. See, yeah. this this is the thing. Uh, mm-hmm. I hope very very soon uh, more African countries will have direct flight to major cities around the world you know yeah without, I, I without think, all that transit and all, and all, all that mm. yeah I, I think this is a, one of the longest flights i ever had in uh-huh. such way yeah but um yeah th- there are a few connection direct connection yeah between uh b- between africa and the and the americas so um wow yeah nice to mm-hmm. nice to finally meet you and uh we we'll have this uh, conversation. Yeah. You know, uh, I was, uh, in fact, let, let's do this. Uh, introduce yourself to my, to my audience and tell them who you are and what you do. Okay, thank you, Eke. Uh, my name is Dona Seishim. I'm a young Rwandan uh, working. I have been working with Rwanda Mines Petroleum and Gas Board as a um, petroleum exploration geophysics, geophysics specialist. But personally, I describe myself as a petroleum geoscientist by profession and a Pan-Africanist by conviction. So um, I am actually a very proud Mandela Institute for Development Studies alumnus. And uh, currently, I'm an African Union PhD scholars. I'm, okay. working, I'm working on Eastern, uh, Eastern Kivu based in evolution and uh, assessing its petroleum, its petroleum system potentials. So in short, uh, that's my my introduction to you. Interesting, interesting. Now you yeah. said you said several things. You are a Pan Africanist. I would I would like to talk about that, that sometime sometime in, in this conversation. And yeah. then you you are a African Union what you 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 PhD scholar. Oh okay. 
This, yeah. So you you are on a, a scholarship, right? Yeah, I'm on African Union scholarship. Good, good, good. So what are you? What are what your this is about? Yeah, I'm working on Eastern Kivu Basin evolution and evaluating its petroleum system potentials. Okay. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So. Uh, now, I know you're going to be in uh, New York for a while, like you yeah. told me last time we, when, we, when we spoke. Tom, yeah. tell, tell my audience what uh, you'll be doing in New York for, for the time. Yeah, uh, as part of my current academic program, I will be heading to, to New York, Syracuse University to meet my, my research collaborator uh, for some laboratory activities and more, okay. more research-related activities there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So how long how long would you be there? I have a three month uh program there. Mm. So it will depend on the progress of my work. Uh, I may it may be shorter or it may be uh, longer. It, it may okay. it may be longer. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So t t tell us a little bit about uh pet pet petroleum geophysics your science and yeah. uh, what you do on your job as a geophysicist or yeah. geoscientist yeah yeah a geophysicist as you said is a part of uh, geosciences yeah. mm -hmm. and um to 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 explain uh, in a very understandable way petroleum geoscience is a multidisciplinary scientific domain uh, which involves uh, geological and geophysical studies in their yeah. applications uh, in terms of uh, petroleum exploration and exploitation. So um, as I previously introduced myself, uh, my work, uh, I work as a geophysics, geophysics specialist. So we yeah. do apply geophysics to, to do exploration. And I do, I, I lead activities uh, related, technical activities related to exploration. So um, yeah, that's, that's how I can explain geosciences. It's, it's just a, a scientific domain which involves geology and geophysics uh, to do exploration and exploitation uh, of petroleum. And when I mean petroleum, it involves oil and gas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, I, I know we have a, a sizable amount of, uh, of those resources in Africa. Yeah. Uh, yes. I'm from Nigeria. We have okay, uh, a lot so of nice. oil and gas. So, okay. ha, ha, which, ha, tell us which other countries in, in Africa have a sizable amount of uh, of oil and gas resources. Yeah, I, I didn't know actually from the beginning that's why I'm from Nigeria. But um, I'm very pleased to meet someone from Nigeria. I had my <laughs> undergraduate studies from Nigeria. Oh, really? Where, where yeah. in Nigeria? Ah, in Adamawa State, American okay, University okay. of Nigeria, and uh, I have been studying for quite a long time ago, uh, for, uh, for quite a long time in uh, in West Africa. Mm. So, and my master's was actually in, in Ghana. Uh, really? From, yeah, yeah. So, Nigeria, you are very, very famous with your petroleum. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's not only Nigeria famous with petroleum in Africa, Angola. Yeah, so Angola. Mm -hmm. it's a very I think big player. Ang Angola has more more points. Yeah. Yeah. So and um, and Ghana recently had mm -hmm. you know uh, in 2007 uh, they have had uh, their first oil field called Jibili. So um, there are a lot of countries, uh, Gabon and uh, several others like Libya. Mm, so yeah, of course. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Africa we, we have. Uh, a very long list of countries uh, mm, mm. having petroleum resources in different ways and uh, different forms. Now, see, looking at the modern, in, the, in this era, there's uh, a lot of talk about uh, energy production should be geared towards uh, non-polluting avenues like mm -hmm. wind, solar, and all that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, 
like I mentioned, I'm from Nigeria. Okay. And Nigeria has a lot of gas and oil. Yeah. Even though we haven't, to me, okay, I will say my, my, my view. Yes. Even though we haven't used those resources correctly. Yeah. Okay. I still believe that, yes, in as much as it's good for us to diversify our energy uh, sources, sources of our energy, okay. I think we must primarily focus on the resources we have that are easily available, mm -hmm. gas and oil. Yes. That's my view. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. What's your view? I think you're not far. We are we have the same view. Um I have been following this trend of um of transitioning from uh from petroleum to uh other forms of, of energy which which are labeled to be sustainable and green. Uh but uh, we keep on forgetting one major thing. It's the petrol the petroleum resources we have they aren't only the source of energy they are the source of means means which may be um any form of let me say power power it may be political power yeah it may be economic power and if you have uh, this economic power and independence you are able to achieve uh any kind of and all that yeah, yeah 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 any kind of thing so for me um i have the same i strongly support the view to exploit what we have to achieve uh, any better ways of living or any better ways science or politicians suggest. Mm -hmm. Let's say um, there is a proverb in Kinyarwanda which says um, can the tongue means like you want to be poor if you have uh, some kind of um, uh, property or any other thing. So you can still use it to to get what you want if it's the priority or if it's what you want yeah so for example uh how we i will restrain myself to me to mention countries names but uh, you know in the middle east there are some countries which are taking up with innovations you know building the green cities yeah. having some mm -hmm. very amazing blueprint yeah. for but it doesn't come from nowhere. They they were able to explore and exploit their resources, and, and they're still, do, they still doing it. And they're still doing it, but they have the gut to say, "Okay, we are building a very green city somewhere, uh, like um, an artificial island, which will be powered by uh, by, by the wind, by the sun, by, by, by whatever they want." Yeah. They're able to dream because they have power. They have means, financial means. So for us, uh, we haven't even been at a level to do exploration and know the exact amount of petroleum resources we have. Hmm. So, and the little we have, uh, someone is telling us, oh, stop uh, using it uh, to power your economy and to enable yourself to live a life you want. Yeah. And we have a vision for you, a green vision for you. So for us, we are at, we are not at a level to forget about uh, knowing our resources. So um, you have had some segment or sectors of of petroleum industry. We have upstream, downstream, and, and middle stream. So for upstream, it's all about extracting, but also exploring. So uh, I think I would encourage all the African nations to at least. Um, involved in exploration, either it's a petroleum and even minerals, because you need to know what you are seated on. Like we are seated on wealth we, do, we don't know about. Yeah. So we need to know. And then after that step of knowing, we have also to decide how uh, to exploit them. Because uh, by that step, uh, we may decide uh, you know, it's it's not a it's not like unsafe to uh, to to extract your resources, but the practice by which you can extract your resources may be uh, subject to the to the 
uh, to the environmental or safety issues. So yeah. we may think about safer ways of trying to extract and, yep. and make the best and use of that's about them. That's about the technology, yeah. Yeah, that's about technology. Mm -hmm. So after that, we can think ways which are convenient and comfortable to us to develop that green uh, source of energies. Because now we cannot be able to afford them. We can only afford uh, those green source of energy if we go to borrow some money. And exactly. And this borrowing comes with conditions. Someone will tell you, uh, maybe this is not a priority. This is a priority. This is a priority. And it's up to you to know the priority, the needs. And uh, we automatically dictate dictates what is priority on your side. Yeah. So I think it's not fair to us even to go in the same trend because most of the time, uh, you know, um, there is these um, multifaceted ways of uh, managing countries. Uh, in a case, you may hear you are invited to a meeting, like let's say this trend of COP where everyone was interested to attend. There you sign an agreement and they don't know maybe if it is restricting you to to do your to use the best of your to, to use best your resources and uh, we, we got this kind of challenges the same to loans when someone gives you a loan uh, they will restrict you to do exploration exploration yeah. is not bad if i get some if i get money from you and i want to know what i have it's not a problem let me know what i have and they don't need to restrict me from knowing and after knowing i may decide what to use what i have because uh it's the best way uh, to, to allow ourselves to go at the same pace, uh, to catch up actually with others. Because if you get means, you are able to set the priority in terms of developing our energy. Mm -hmm. So yeah. then uh, this is where um, our power lies to know and to decide. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. See, I, I this is, this, see, now, I will say this. Yes, I absolutely agree that climate change is happening. Yeah, that's the first thing. But uh, uh, in the last few years, I've taken my time to listen to scientists uh, and read a couple of books about the matter because mm -hmm. living in Europe and I have young children, uh, teen teenagers, and uh, my first daughter is in university and they they come around talking about all this uh, advocacy. Okay. okay. Now, and one thing I've seen is that they talk about things and then when you ask them questions, they don't really know much. Mm -hmm. But then they want you to, to buy their idea. And I say something to young people. No. If you want people like me to buy your idea, at least you as a young person need to know what your idea is yes okay and you also need to know a little bit about the the history the origin and history of that idea okay mm -hmm. see this is what i've seen with a lot of young people once something look flashy flashy they catchy. take it yeah catchy yeah. They take it, they carry it on their head, and they start promoting it. Yeah. And when you ask them basic questions and they can't answer, they, they get angry, they get de very defensive. And for me, this is something I don't want young Africans to do. Although, uh, uh, unfortunately, I have seen many, many, many of them doing this. Okay. I've seen many of them doing this. See, yes, we need to transition sometime. 
Yes. But this is not the time for us to transition. See, the, the technologies, energy technologies that are, are available and is well understood are the, the technologies that is run by the most abundant, well, it's not the most, ab but, but abundant resources we have, oil and gas. Yes, we have a lot of uh, sunlight energy in Africa, but then the technology is not as well known, well understood, because even the people who are promoting it around the world, Europe, for example, how much of that energy source are they using? Do, I mean, do you know anything about that? Yeah, I, I think you, you, you have mentioned something very crucial. Uh, we seem to be attracted by cash things, not all about teenager, even uh, countries in Africa, mm. they, because they want to fit into trending uh, polit political uh, uh, aspects. Uh, they want to align to trending uh, political views. Uh, that's when they get to be involved. But when you, you say transition, you have to wonder to ask yourself, am I transitioning from which point to which point? Which yeah. point? Exactly. Where are we transitioning from where to where? So, and I think, uh, yes, you may even agree with someone. Let's, let me be part of the transition. Let me start the transition, but allow me to start from somewhere. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's say you are a country X, which have been seated on petroleum resources and they have never used them and they didn't even know the amount or if they are there, but how will, will I tell you if you are trying to figure out if you have them, you're going to transit from there to there. Maybe in terms of uh, use, you may say, yes, I may transit from this use to this one. But if you are sure, if you have them, why would you waste your resources and uh, and keep them buried in the, in the underground, thinking that you are transitioning? So I think um, the question of the best way of transitioning is to understand exactly uh, what you have and who you are in a way that even the contribution to the transition would be meaningful. And you have heard about um, this issue of compensating those people who are not contributing a lot uh, to, to, to the emission, to the pollution. Uh, yeah. I think Africans, we are victims and um, we, we don't, we, I mean, we deserve to be compensated, but we don't <laughs> need to, to cry for compensation because uh, we need to fight, we, sh we share the, the atmosphere and we share the globe, but uh, we really need to fight on our side and uh, on our own and then uh, figure out what we want, not not going in the same trend because we really have a lot to catch up with. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I agree we have a lot to catch up with. Uh, but one thing I will say, uh, I'm not, I don't believe we are victims of any kind, okay? I don't. I don't buy into any victim story. I'm not a victim, and, and you you are not a victim. Our continent are not victims. Uh, but I agree, we need to, for us to transition to some, some a, a future state of energy use, we need to at least- uh, Use what we have. Come, come, from, <laughs> so, come from a base, okay? Yes. And we have, we're not on, a, on, any, on any base at the moment, okay? And we need to, uh, it's very, very important for Africa to be industrialized. Yes. Using the best known technology, the, cheapest form, the, the cheapest form of technology. We can even improve them. Yeah. Okay. For existing Good. ones. Yeah. Good. Now. See, you, you said this several times. We need to know. We need to know. We need to know. And that's something that I think 
is hindering us from actually building our continent. Yes. Knowledge. Knowledge is the key. Yeah. See, that's why I saw your profile on LinkedIn. I say, hey, I want to talk to this young man. Okay. Knowledge is the key. We have a huge knowledge gap. Yes. The reason why we haven't been able to exploit our oil and gas resources is knowledge. Knowledge. And the reason why we will struggle if we transition to the newer source of energy without first building our knowledge base in the in, in the technology and we transition will forever will rely <laughs> rely on someone else yes for the technologies mm -hmm. and that's not in our interest yes we need a lot more young people like you getting their phd in this various science or technolo technologies that will run all the things we'll need in the future. Yes. Okay. So I say this all the time. I ask this question on my uh, Facebook page, which is more important, natural resources or knowledge? Knowledge, of course. Knowledge. See, yeah. because you can have all the natural resources. If you don't know anything about them, it's useless. Yeah. See, our oil and gas have always been under our feet. Yeah. Nobody knew what to do with, with it until late 18th century. It has always been here. Mm -hmm. So we need to understand that the most important thing for us to do is to acquire the knowledge. Sure. And then once you acquire the knowledge, you can decide whichever way you want to use it. Yes. Yeah, okay. so I, I, that's, that's my stand, actually. Knowledge first, and then I... Uh, you decide the letter and you make a, an informed decision. Yeah. 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 See, uh, these things are essential. Yes. And uh, if we continue buying into things that are trendy, without building a base that we can now decide, okay, we have this technology, we have this knowledge, we have this product, we have these uh, resources. How we want to build our countries and our economies, we need to gather all this things or the knowledge to decide whichever way to run you know yeah yeah mm -hmm. give 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 us your general view of the state of africa's energy poverty and the implications yeah um maybe we you know in uh, poverty itself yeah is a uh, has been like a topic uh, or a theorized aspect, mm. um, which may take uh, some. Of course, I really I always um, based on and I like highlighting some key things to understand uh, a situation on on its okay. own. Okay, so poverty can be relative or. Poverty can be 
uh, based on um, a peculiar situation, if I okay. can say. Uh, for us, Africa, uh, the energy poverty, the status, the poverty has been, the energy poverty has been there to some extent, but uh, relatively the energy poverty is increasing because you define poverty as um, limitations or lack of access or um, or lack of something, uh, like lack of access to energy is, is clearly a uh, a poverty, but uh, yeah. energy may be there, and um, may, energy may not even it may it may not even be there. So it's still like poverty, or you may have energy, but in very, very limited ways. So mm. it remains poverty. So for us, with increasing population and uh, with limited source of energy, and yeah. uh, with limited ways of distribution of energy. Uh, the um, the situation is there and <laughs> the poverty is increasing. Yeah. Uh, let's say um, how this continent has been facing uh, significant. Uh, I mean, uh, the demography, the, the increasing demograph demogra demography. So with uh, the the needs, let's say we are also accessing technology and uh, we need we have needs. To industrialize our nations, uh, there is no way uh, something is decreasing. So the status is that the African energy poverty is increasing. So uh, let's say uh, some about um, like in the two two thousand and in twenty in twenty in twenty twenty two, uh, if you call, if you if you compare the Africa uh, energy access like among populations, mm. um, like around uh, around six hundred million, around, probably around the half of billion population, uh, they were not having access uh, to, to energy in Africa. Yeah, yeah, and um, most of them. Uh, I don't know where Nigeria belongs to Sub Sahara, right? Yeah. 98, 98% belongs to Sub Saharan Africa. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, the situation uh, <laughs> of energy poverty is so yeah. catastrophic. Yeah. And uh, something needs to be done about it. Y yes, something needs to be done. See, w one thing, see, and this is why I mentioned before that. Uh, I don't see myself as a victim because mm -hmm. see, for yeah. me, for me, because I believe that re regardless of what any external entity does to us, okay, or does in Africa, if our leaders governance is uh, doing the right things. Most of our struggles right now will be half. Okay. Now I I will ask you. You came from Rwanda. Tell me, do you live in Kigali? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I live in Kigali okay. sometimes. Okay. But I'm, so, I'm from a village. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 Well, well, you, well, you you live in you live in Kigali. Yeah. yeah? I live in okay. Kigali. So tell tell me. When do you guys have a uh, electricity shutdown in Kigali? I think it's a. It's not. It's it's not often. It's not okay. often. Okay. Um, so you guys have constant ele electricity in Kigali. Okay. Sure, I have a constant electricity. Okay. Good. Good. See, yeah. in Nigeria, for example, while I was there, I've been out of Nigeria now for. 17 years while i was there i only i own a generator in my flat in my father's house he had two or three generators yeah unfortunately now he's retired and because of the the infl inflation and lack 
of fuel, petrol, diesel, and of course, he cannot afford to buy fuel for his generators. Mm -hmm. And the el electricity coming from the grid is not available. Mm -hmm. So he's an old man, he's 79 in his house, okay, alone because my mom my mom my mom passed on 10 years ago. So he in his house, no light, he can't watch TV. Mm -hmm. See, yeah, I'm just using I, I'm just using myself yeah. and my fa my father. Yeah, okay? I, I but know. That's that's what every other Nigerian is going through. The majority yeah, I, of us. Okay. I think now, I, hold on, hold on. Sorry, no, sorry, I'm, okay. I'm coming. Look at mm -hmm. South Africa. Yeah. I was in South Africa in 2007. I was there yes. for nearly four, uh, four months. Okay. I was on a, on a project back then. Okay. South Africa. I, I was in a Santin, okay, a, a suburb of a, of a Joburg. The light was constant. Today, what in the last two, three, two years, I've been hearing a lot of things about the erratic power, power supply in, in South Africa. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we we yes, we have difficulties with. Uh, energy in Af Africa, but we have, I think most of that problem is caused by the, by governance. Look at uh, Rwanda. You guys have more sustainable energy in Rwanda than Nigeria, than South mm -hmm. Africa. Nigeria and South Africa have more resources than Rwanda. By far, mm -hmm. yeah. yet, yet Rwanda is more is moving forward in the, in the is moving forward in the right direction. So it's about it's about government it's about leadership and all that. Okay, yeah. so see we need we need our leaders to do the right things to make sure the our problem with our energy, which uh, is a uh, is a uh, the the main thing holding us back as a continent, will be resolved. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Um. I know you you wanted you wanted to say something. Yeah. Yeah. What I want to say is um. Yeah. From your your testimony, I I came from Nigeria to Rwanda for for well, for two weeks around okay. one. Three three weeks holiday, so um, I was transitioning to Rwanda, going to uh, to see my research collaborator here in America. And um, what you said is true because we were having some constant power interruption in Nigeria. So I came to Rwanda, which is true. Uh, for for three weeks, I have never had the power cut. Okay. So um, and when I when I one when I ask myself the question why Nigeria having gas having everything mm. even the the sun they have the sun and other thing so like the, the the issue has been the management and the leadership yeah so uh, the way they manage they they manage the, uh, the the power grid the installation in place. Uh, it's quite different from uh, the technical management of the of the installation in Rwanda. I have seen that very mm. like a very remarkable difference, and yeah. um, the way you think of um, supplying or giving access to your population, uh, the way side those sides think is or practices is, is different so mm. uh you are you are very right to say that uh the leadership and the management uh, have a very big impact to uh to fight against uh, energy poverty remember yeah. as i said energy poverty is not like a lack of energy source or other thing yeah, yeah it's maybe based on how people are able to afford them those things depends on how the leadership is able to 
formulate yep. commercial policies to allow population uh, to access or to afford electricity. Yeah. So, and the way you manage your your installations and other things also matters in, in terms of leadership and management. So, well, uh, for me, uh, a few things have happened in Nigeria, for example, in the in the last two months. One, uh, the the state, Abia State, hmm. uh, recently launched a power station in yeah. the state, and the the city of Aba now now has constant power. Hmm. Uh, that's one is very 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 important. Uh, I hope other states will copy that and do the same. And then I think. Last week, just last week, uh, uh, Dangote refinery just yeah. went on online. Okay, yeah. so uh, that means uh, more affor affordable petroleum and diesel will mm -hmm. uh, come come on online, and then uh, with the less need of foreign exchange to import fuel, mm -hmm. the 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 uh nigeria the nigerian naira will rise in value and then the inflation will, will be less so those things are, 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 are happening and i'm happy it, it's happening uh but see nigeria has been flaring gas for decades i mean decades for more than 40 years that's had been a huge loss. Yeah, Le huge loss. See, without gas alone, we could have powered the whole homes. the whole country. Yeah, the whole country. We could have powered the whole country. Yes, for forty years. Yeah. So with these things, when when I see these things, it makes me sad, because it tells me. Uh, our leaders were not. Uh, oh, oh, yes, we they were not adequate in the way they they thought about things. You know, yeah. So uh, I hope I hope we would 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 do better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, I, I'm not accepting to be like the. I'm not relying on on, on being victimized, but uh, yes, <laughs> um, it's it it must be uh, the, the truth must be told. Uh, if you are if someone is a victim, means like what I mean. There are some cause of their suffering, eh? there mm. some cause of their suffering. Yeah, but uh, by accepting to the real cause. Uh, you are almost half away from solving the problem. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, See, so that's I, why I, I like what uh, President Kagame. I, I I listened to an interview of his. In fact, I used it in in my vid in a video in my personal channel. He talked about how long would Africans continue talking about being victims. Okay. Yeah. So see, and if you. If you see yourself as a victim, you do something. You well, see when you see yourself as a victim, most most times you can't do anything. You need to you need to remove that seal of victimhood from yourself for you to see what is what is going on around you. You yes, know, so yes, I, yeah. So I mean, uh, maybe. I'm totally 100% agree with you. Mm. Uh, the thing everyone who realizes the cause of their suffering need to do is not only about debating or discussing about it, to do something about it. Yes, yes. Yeah, it's very yes. well encouraged to do something when you... Yeah. In your view, what are the main challenges why Africa has not been able to use uh, 
its petro petroleum resources? Yeah, as you have been discussing, mm. uh, first of all, it comes to the issue of lacking knowledge. Yeah. And, um, and uh, when it comes to the decision, the leadership is also the problem. So lack of knowledge and, uh, and, and the leadership mostly have been hindering self of this. Because mm. when you talked about flaring, uh, you think about how someone gets um, a license to do exploitation without having some clear terms protecting the national interests. Yeah. Either it's in terms of local content and the participation or in terms of resources management. It's maybe how they will be managing revenues and how the population around will be benefiting. Yeah. So someone is, is planning to extract the gas and, and to, extract, to, to, uh, to extract the oil and flare gas. It's a totally nonsense because um, the gas itself has been uh, counted among the reserves and they are flaring half of the reserves because you possibly they were negotiated to with we negotiated with the government uh, favors you to just flare things you spent yep. on while, while extracting. So let's say the population around were not electrified and the homes were not electrified. So that was an opportunity to think to think of ways to use the resources either by having gener generation of electricity. Let me give you an example. Currently, Rwanda does not currently have a trend, but we are doing exploration. Yeah. And the hydrocarbons we have, uh, it's a natural gas, which is uh, methane gas mm. mixed in, in, what, in, in the lake water. Okay. So we do our best to, to use the gas in the water and, and, and feed the national grid, the, the electricity national grid. Yeah. So with that percentage being added to support uh, the hydroelectricity and the other sources, uh, Rwanda is able, at least from uh, 2015, to, from 2000 up to 2015 or 16, there have been an increase, which was above 300% uh, to get electricity to homes which did not have electricity. So. Yeah. Uh, you see, it's a great effort if you are able to uh, to mix different kind of uh, sources by yeah. harnessing your resources to solve problems around. So um, those two uh, are the key challenges yeah. to where Africa remains now. Yeah, uh, knowledge and uh, and uh, leadership, yeah. leadership which is involved in in making informed decisions. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, uh, see, uh, the way things are going, uh, I like I, I just mentioned, things are looking better. Okay, I hope uh, it continues that way. <laughs> That's it. You know, I hope it continues that way. See, like you mentioned, all these things we're talking about, energy poverty is mostly sub-Sahara Africa. North Africa is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Okay, Egypt. Uh, I, okay, I don't know if the 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 crisis in Libya is affecting their energy availability availability, but Egypt, or Algeria, Tunisia, Morocco are fairly. They have fairly energy abundance. You know, so yeah, you know, yeah, it's nice to talk to you about uh, energy. Okay, so yeah. let let me let me let me go to my some of my 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 favorite topics in this uh, on this pod podcast. See, yeah. I I I I love to read, uh, and I like to in, in, encourage my my listeners and uh, viewers to read. Okay, like uh, like we just said, knowledge, knowledge is everything. Yeah. So I want you to please uh, recommend five books. Okay. Yeah. Five books um, to my audience. Yeah. Uh, some, some few books uh, I can recommend. Uh, be uh, like yourself if you are aspiring um, 
uh, the African leader would recommend to read a book called, titled uh, Start With Why. Okay, um, yeah, I have it somewhere here. Yeah, Start yeah. With Why by, by Simon Sinek. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, Good one. Uh, and the second one I would recommend is The Art of Innovation. Uh, Art by, of Innovation. Yeah, by Tom Kelly. Okay. Yeah, and the third one is Decolonizing the Mind. Ah, okay. By Ngugi Wathiong from Kenya. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And another one uh, is about uh, Innovator's Dilemma by mm. Clayton. Okay. Yeah. In so, innovator's and, Dilemma, okay. Yeah, Innovator's Dilemma. So, yeah. and uh, the last one I can recommend you is a, a book by Walter Rodney. It, it is titled How Europe right and there. Developed Africa. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I yeah. see you have yeah. you have most of them in your. Oh own yeah, I, I I I do try to read some of those some of those classics. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It was yes. it was recommended to me in uh, 19, 1997 when I oh, when I did my when I did my uh, MBA. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, good. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, now, you're welcome. You are a young African. Okay. Yeah. And uh, what you are doing is uh, to add value to Africa. Okay. Yeah. Now, I, want, I also want you to advise fellow young Africans how they can also add value in their own spaces. So, what is your advice for them? Yeah. Uh, the core of value addition to things around it always depends on, on needs around. So what I would advise um, is just to, to value their opinion and their dreams and they are to, to do something, either it's mm. sharing opinion Either it's, um, I mean, when I say do something, like they have to vary your dreams, your opinion, and then do something. It means yeah. like, don't feel stuck. Huh? The same okay. way you said uh, someone have to avoid to, to feel victim. Like, um, it's not a bad thing to feel victim, but to feel victim and, and wait for someone to rescue you. Good. Yeah. Is, uh, is the worst so I would say like behave like water. I you know when water when water is flowing, it mm. you always find a, a direction to to flow mm. to. Mm. So just value your opinion, your dreams, and try to do something. Okay. Doing something must be uh, filling the gaps. There may be knowledge or skills, or there may be um, all those kind of uh, constraints mm. which may hinder you to uh, to to transit from point A to B. So just find something, do something. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. I'm not I'm not a very good Christian, but uh, Matthew, <laughs> Matthew 7, 7 says, such will find. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Truth. If you see. Mm -hmm. See, uh, just like you, I'm not, uh, right now, I'm no longer a good, good Christian. Once upon, once upon a time, I was. Okay. But see, uh, one, th one thing I found out is that uh, the scriptures say things that uh, that may look corny when you listen mm -hmm. to it, yeah. but they are eternal wisdom. Yeah, yeah. In, in okay. Them. So uh, if you don't, if you don't find, you will not. You will not. If you don't seek. You will not find. Yeah, as an explorationist, uh, that's what I, I rely on. Good, good, so. good. See, if you don't seek, you will not find. Yes. Okay. So, young Africans need to seek, but for yes. them to seek, they need to have an opinion. They have. They need to have a, an idea of what they are seeking. To respect what, what what they they think seeking or not. Yeah. Yeah. It's a value. Yeah. Good, good, good. So let me ask you my last question. Mm. What is your vision for Africa in the next 
20, 30 years time? Hmm. Yeah, this is a tricky question. When you ask about <laughs> vision, I think, do you ask me what do I... Uh, what do like, you see? What do you, what, what do you want how, to see? Yes. Like, what, what do I want to... How will I see Africa? How do I want to see Africa? In, yes. In, in, how do you want to see Africa in the next 20, 30 years time? Is it not like, what uh, do I expect Africa to be in... Yeah, maybe what, what you want to what you expect it. What when when it comes to the question of wanting to see, it means you have authority and the power on how it may oh, be. Oh yeah, let's say okay. I, I, I will tell you. I will tell you. Okay. You, you and your mates have the power. Yeah, you do yeah, have so the power. I I will answer in two ways because using that power and the wish. This is how I would wish Africa to be. I would wish Africa or I would want Africa to be um, a peaceful and a unified, like a unified and um, transparent continent, you know? Okay. Yeah. Unity, peace, and um, transparency, uh, fairness. Uh, okay. That's what I can say. Good. And... Um, and coming to my second ways of responding to your question, um, the way um, I see Africa will be, like someone, like someone, a bystander who is waiting mm. to see Africa evolving re relative to what Africa is and is today. all the and all parameters around. I see Africa as a young continent, as it is now, but also so dominated and relying on technology. Okay, but if parameters A and B are not fixed, uh, it may it may look in a different way. Let's say uh, young people we are driven by technology. We are we dream about technology. We know how to use it. To how we are testy of using it. We are already using it, and we are major players of the technology. But if we did not take care, like let's say like where we will be like the source of energy to power the the technology. Mm -hmm. We'll be in a total mess. Agreed. Like the way the communication will rely on, on on Western satellites to to feed signals to our homes. So anytime they say we are cutting, we are switching off. Okay. So we may return back to the Stone Age. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. See, this is it. This is why I say knowledge is the most important thing. Right? And we yes. need people like you. See that again. That's why I say you and your mates have the power, right? If you have the power to go out, seek the knowledge, to become experts, so that in the future you guys decide this is what we want to do and go and do it yes. without have, having to rely on some someone else to help you do something. Yes. Aha. So you have the power. Mm, yeah. So uh, like someone, if you take, mm, let's say, no, don't say, don't suppose I have power. So what I wish Africa um, is, uh, is to be, uh, yes, to accept, to embrace the trend of technology and other things, but uh, to be uh, autosufficient in, in, in in terms of energy and uh, their own uh, uh, local uh, uh, know-how. Mm. Yeah, so that's all. And the one thing, maybe with respect to the first answer, when I say uh, peaceful and uh, unified Africa is because I believe as long as our continent, our countries are, are safe, are able to travel, uh, uh, from this country to another country. Yeah. Uh, young people, it's not something you need to teach us. We really need, we, we think uh, innovation. We do innovation uh, because we we are a little bit attached to traditional ways of doing things. Mm. So with peace and unity, uh, the African uh, young people uh can take it to uh, a better position relative to 
other parts of the world. Good. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan, yeah. thank you. Thank you very much for being a great guest of the Think Big for Africa podcast. You are welcome. All right. So have fun in uh, New York. All right. Okay. And uh, I will be reaching out to you to know how things are going with you. All right. Yeah. All right, then. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Have a nice day. You too. Bye.